Comic Book Kids. Join us as Carrie and Skeets find new friends and excitement in the adventure-filled stories and drawings of none other than Marvin, the slightly wacky cartoonist at the studios of Burl Bonics, a sometimes grouchy boss who loves kids but doesn't always know how to deal with them. Just can't talk to kids. Someone who can and does talk to kids is Phantos, the comic book wizard who comes to life for a day and is befriended by Carrie and Skeets, and thanks, he gives them transporter belts. You shall wear these. Belts? Transporter rings. Those have the power of changing the imagination's polarity. With these, you can step from the real world into the unreal. With a touch of a button on their magic belts, Carrie and Skeets can journey into the comic book drawings on Marvin's board and bring all the people and places to life. In today's adventure, Skeets and Carrie are given the magic belts by the famous Fantos the Wizard. Stand back, mortals! I'm Fantos the Terrible! Ha 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 ha! Even my laugh is terrible! I just can't Spells. talk to kids. Those are even more terrible. Spell, uh, spells, yes. <laughs> Paprika, parsley, and okra. Jumbo, simmer two hours and you have gumbo. Gumbo? That's a recipe. This is plain terrible. Well, at least nobody can see me with this. Hi, Marv. Ah! Oh, uh, Carrie. Well, this is the future artist. That's me. Me too. Who's this? I'm Skeets and I want to be a comic book artist. Well, good for you. You know, it makes me happy to know you want to be a comic book artist, you know, <laughs> just like me. Not like you. Oh, um, well, how did you get in here? You know, the boss doesn't like to have visitors. We sneaked in. I'm a master sneak. You ever need any sneaking done, just call Skeets. You want to hear how I sneaked past the principal yesterday? I want to hear about Marvin's new comic book story. That's what we came here for, remember? Oh, all right. Was that book I loaned you any help? Oh, it sure was. You know, it uh, gave me an idea. Take a look at this. Do you like? Wow, wicked. He likes. He's a worried wizard. I planned on using some of the magic spells in this uh, funny old book for the character, but I can't think of any stories. A character and no story? Mm -hmm. Your boss isn't going to like that. Mm -hmm. You better get started fast or you're going to be in trouble. Skeeter! No, no, he's right. If I don't come up with a story real fast, Mr. Bonix will never let me do a comic book on this wizard character. I wouldn't let him push me around. I wouldn't be afraid of old Burl Bonnet. What is he? He's probably a fat old guy in a boring old business suit. He's probably ugly. Probably never even smart. Bulls. Hi. Who let you in here? I bet you're responsible for this. You let these kids sneak in here. We didn't need his help to sneak in here. You're just making things worse. We came to see Marvin's new drawings, Mr. Bonnix. Oh, what for? They're, they're, they're helping me research a, a, a new character. Uh, see, Carrie, loan me this old book of spells. Is that so? How nice. Yes, and I'm planning a terrific new character for a brand new comic book. All about a wizard character, see? Very charming. And what about the comic book you're supposed to be working on now? Well, it's I due got... for reduction today. Where is it? Well, it's, uh, it's right here, Mr. Bonnet. I'll bring it to my office immediately. Wizards. Uh, <laughs> the day you come up with a good idea will be wizardry indeed. <laughs> and stop wasting company time talking to these yeah. kids. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll uh, see you later. That's some boss you have. Oh, wow, wicked. <laughs> you should see him on a bad day, when he's mad. When he's mad? <laughs> you know, Marvin's a nice guy. I'd really like to help him do his story if we could. Well, maybe there's an idea in my old book. It's been in my family for generations. It's ancient. Don't give me that old spell book stuff. <laughs> oh. Uh, take it back. Some of this stuff isn't even in English. You're oh. dropping pages. All right, I'm sorry. Don't get hostile, all right? I'll just put them back. Wait a minute. These aren't even numbered. I think you can put them in any order you want. It's a real funny book. How are you supposed to make sense out of it, then? Let's see. <laughs> What's funny? This looks like some of your homework. Skeeter! <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to be a wizard, OK? You be Watch careful. Me. All right, I'm going to cast a spell. Here we go. Knee, Taurus, Drow. <laughs> Never heard that before. The Zod E. Razulau. That doesn't make any sense. Iserle the Leps El Mars Numi. What do you think? This reads like one of your homework assignments. 
Here's the last part, okay? Oh, Phantos! Oh, Phantos! Oh, wicked! Only a wizard knows the spell. What's happened to your voice? It is I, your fellow wizard. <laughs> Thank the stars. I have found somebody to help me. Now I can have a word with you. And the word is... Splint! Where are you going? You can't leave your fellow wizard in need. What's this fellow wizard stuff? Only a wizard could read the correct spell. No kidding? Clear as crystal. In secret words, the wizards dwell. Unscramble them. Release the spell. I said that? Backwards. But it worked. And only you wizards can help me save the entire world. But I'm not a real wizard. Just a class clown. He skeets. I'm Carrie. <laughs> then, then the world is... Doom. Maybe we should swap talk with this guy, you know? Just who are you? I am Phantos, oldest and supposedly wisest of all wizards. But I'm not really wise after all. Phantos, just like the name in the book. You look pretty wise to me. But I've made a dreadful mistake. Just look at my world. A wasteland. It's all burn up, isn't it? Won't you please help me, even if you aren't wizards? Well, what do you want us to do? Return with me to my world. Just step right through this panel. Wait a minute. We can't walk into a comic book panel. Why not? It's two-dimensional. It's frozen. Oh. How vexing. Hmm. Wait. I'll make you both wizards for a day. Then you'll be able to come with me. Just like that. What do we do, wear funny hats like yours? You shall wear these. Belts? Transporter rings. Those have the power of changing the imagination's polarity. With these, you can step from the real world into the unreal, or vice versa. But won't we be missed? Once you step through the panel, time on this side won't progress an instant, just as time stands still now in my world. Transporter rings, huh? They should call them conveyor belts. <laughs> just touch the bottom in front and the polarity of imagination will reverse. Follow me. And off we go. But just in case, I better take my book. <laughs> Behold, my doomed world. All this was caused by my dreadful mistake. Wow, you did all this? Draco did all this. Draco? He's bent on destroying the whole world. And I don't have magic powers powerful enough to stop him. What's a Draco? I was his official keeper, but he escaped. From where? From this. He grew back to normal size. I'm too old to capture him again alone. Won't you please help me? But what's a Draco? Why, a dragon, of course. A, a dragon? dragon? You want us to capture a dragon? Shh, not too loud. He could be anywhere, just waiting to pounce. Oh, oh, what a sad, sad world. I 
was the master of my domain Fair and just, quite humane Now I have naught but a grim refrain Oh, what a sad, sad world Cities were beautiful, fields were rich Not a war, not a witch Now all oh, my country is dark as pitch Oh, what a sad, sad world With my wand and magic book Life was happy then But the dragon came to cook Every citizen How to recover my magic powers Build the towns, grow the flowers All I have left are my lonely hours here in my sad, sad world. I should make everything right, but how? Let us help here and now. We can work wonders if you allow here in your sad, sad world. In my tiny crystal ball, Draco stayed for good. Now he's burning, one and all, through the neighborhood. We'll help you out of your sorry need. Don't lose heart, we'll succeed. I'm just afraid to be fricasseed. Put on a spit and twirl. Soon boy, 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 boy. I don't see how you're going to get a dragon back into that. We must shrink him to fit. We can't destroy him. Only imprison him in the crystal. How do you shrink Draco? We must use an ancient device called crystal condenser. Only that can reduce Draco to the size of a dragonette. Great! <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Draco has it. Oh, no! A beam of light keeps a dragon small and harmless. But every hundred years, it must be recharged with a spell. <laughs> and I lost the spell. Draco broke out of the crystal and grabbed my magic wand and jammed it into the condenser. So now I've lost my magic wand, too. I had to run for my life. He's a very mean dragon. Don't worry. Maybe there's a spell for the crystal condenser here in my book. Huh? There is. At least it'll do. All we have to do is get that crystal condenser away from the clammy calls of Draco. Oh, he guards it in his cave. Anyone who tries stealing it will be burnt to a crisp. It's oh. hopeless. I'll get that condenser for you. You? How? Yeah. I'll sneak into his cave. You can divert his attention. Look, if I can get past Brobonix, I can get past any monster. You'll rue those words once you see Draco. How does a dragon live in all this smoke? Dragons love smoke. To them it's like fresh air. We won't be happy until the entire world is covered with a thick blanket of smoke. Surprise! <laughs> I just couldn't wait to see the look on your faces. Oh! So, Phantos, the inept wizard, thought he could surprise the great Draco. <laughs> look at you standing in frozen fear. You look like two popsicles. <laughs> oh, have mercy on us, great mythical beasts. <laughs> Not a chance. I'm going to smoke you both with dragon fire like a couple of hams. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps at least. 
spare my friend Gary. Oh, 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 oh. You want to make a deal? We don't make deals with dragons. How oh, touching. Tell you what, Conehead, I'll spare her if you give me that book. <laughs> what book? The Book of Magic Spells you're hiding behind your back. Oh, <laughs> you mean, you mean this book? Oh, stop picking on Phantos. What do you care about that old book anyhow? I know you hope to control me with a spell from that book. Nothing could be more obvious. Well, you're not going to get away with it. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 the day of a million complications. What shall I do? I'll make it easy for you to decide, wizard. Either give me that book right now, or the girl burns. No! Do you expect us to turn this book over to a nobody? Nobody? I'm the world-famous Draco. Everybody hates me. <laughs> I was a baby dragon man, little more than a household pet. When a knight came fighting, speaking, fighting, looking for a dragon to get. I roasted him, I toasted him, until I made a ghost of him. Now he's gone to his last reward, and you know what? <laughs> I even ate his sword. I soon grew to great excess, like my cousin in Loch Ness. When a prince came sneaking, crawling, peeking, looking for a maiden mistress. I leveled him, disheveled him, and I went and deviled him. Served him up in a princely stew, and you know what? I'll do the same to you. <laughs> I'll bet you two, I'll get you two. On fire, I'll set you two. I'm the one you would have robbed. Now you know what? Now you know what? Now you know what? I'll have you fished up, Bob. Now, are you convinced? I'm convinced that you're a very bad dragon and deserve all that's coming to you. Beware my wrath, young lady. You're treading on thin ash. Give me my book, now! Give me the book. There isn't any hope for it, I guess. There's always hope. Oh, my book, my book. Oh. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh. Here's your book. Oh. That was the sloppiest throw I've ever seen. <laughs> now, where is it? I can't see a thing in <laughs> all this smoke. Come on, let's split. <laughs> split? How do we do that? Run! Oh, I'm so Oh boy. Uh, what the? Empty? Oh, smoking sulfur! Correct! Phantos? Are you here? Are you anywhere? Where am I? Skeeter! Gary! Phantos? Draco! Oh, I've got your crystal condenser. Oh, oh at last. Phantos, oh. hurry up and get this thing working before Drago oh, catches up with oh, us. Joy, my crystal condenser. Never mind the mush. This is a rush. <laughs> Very well, now. Now, 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 where's the spell? <laughs> Here it is. But first, I must free my wand. Uh, 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 my wonderful magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Illumino this gizmo quantavaste ritala. Oh, would you like this in English? Just, just read. Uh, let's see. Light this gem that's on this stem with a magic wand of tin. Wave it thrice with a high pitched voice. With a high pitched voice? <laughs> It works. It At works. last! Oh, ho, 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 ho. I have you all. I have bad news. You're all going to be fired. <laughs> now he won't be a danger to anyone. You should have known smoking stunts your growth. What are you doing with him now? 
I'll take our little Draco and the condenser back to the cave. With the condenser beam on him from now on, he'll remain small and harmless. Hey, Phantos, you know, you better write down these spells before you forget them again. Wait, I have a better idea. Why don't you just keep the whole book, Phantos? You mean that? Sure. I mean, it's a book for wizards, and we're not real wizards anyway. You know, I'm just a good sneak. <laughs> oh, thank you both. Now I can use magic to rebuild my whole world. I guess we have to give the belts back now, huh? Oh, yeah. I nearly forgot. Oh, countless comets. If you take off the belts, you'll never get back to your world. And I'm so grateful to you for saving my world. Why don't you keep them? Wow, wicked! You really mean that? I insist. A fair exchange. A book for belts. You can use them whenever you wish. You can visit me or step into any other picture you, you'd like. Wow. Think of what we could do with these every time we walk into the comic book studio. We could go anywhere. Hmm. I have a feeling these are going to get us into more trouble than the book ever did. Here's where we stepped through. Goodbye. And may the luck of the stars always shine on you both. Goodbye, Phantos. Yeah, thanks. What happened? An adventure. But did it happen? It was like a dream. We still have the belts. Do you think we should show them to Marvin? No. Oh, I'm glad you're still here. Mr. Bonnix liked those panels I turned in, so now he's ready to take a look at my wizard character. Oh, you mean Phantos? That's yeah. great. Right, uh, Phantos? Uh, but, gee, I've got to come up with a story right away or I'm going to be in big trouble. Uh-oh, too late. All right, Marvin, let's hear something about this wizard of yours. I want a good story or he's out. O-U-T, out. Well, um, um well, actually, Well, was just I... telling us the whole story. Uh, I was? Yeah, I the was. wizard's name is Phantos. Phantos. Yeah. And he's the keeper of Draco. Uh, Draco? Yeah. Oh, no, Draco. the great fire-breathing dragon. Right. Ah, uh, Draco. Draco. Uh... And Draco escapes the magic powers of the wizard, and he grows to a huge size. See, that's why the world was all burnt out, because Draco was on a rampage. Wow! Uh, oh, yeah. you know... <laughs> You have the makings of a real story, a real adventure here, Marvin. Oh, gee, uh, thanks, boss. Yeah, no, no, no. You call me sir. I guess, uh, uh, sir. But why didn't you tell me this story earlier? Well, um, actually, I, uh, well, I thought I'd try it out on the kids first, and if uh, they like it, our readers might like it, too. Good thinking, Marvin. Good thinking, yes. Yes, now, uh, I guess that's so bad having these, uh, kids around after all. But don't waste too much company time talking to them. <laughs> yes, sir. Gee, thanks for helping me out of that tight spot. Anytime. But, uh, how'd you two come up with that yarn? Oh, Skeets and I have lots of stories. We'll come back sometime and tell you more. Yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be fine. Hey, say, the, the wizard's holding the book of magic spells. Now, how do you suppose that got into the story? I... Where'd they go? Oh, well. <laughs> Back to the old uh, drawing board. In today's adventure, our kids visit a haunted house to help a young girl who's terrified by ghosts, but they get a surprise. You're getting warmer. Uh, no, now you're getting colder and colder. You're freezing cold. You're as cold as an Eskimo's iced drink. Oh, this is a tough one, Skeets. Look, that eraser's in plain sight. Skeets on it. I just can't seem to see it anywhere. All right, you're getting warmer. Oh, good. Warmer. You're, you're warm as vampire's blood. Oh, it, Skeeter. Now you're even warmer. It's about time. You're hot. You're hot as tomato soup, which is a lot hotter than vampire's blood. Skeeter. If I make the game scary, it's more fun. You're making me sick. I don't know what fun is. I found it. Oh, already? Now that is fun. It was? All right, it's my turn. Okay, you go out and hide, and I'll hide the eraser. All right, but remember, hide it in plain sight. I will. But really hide it. Okay, now go out the door. Because when I say hide it, I mean really hide it. Okay. Hide! I am hiding! You know, I mean really hide it, Bonnix. Kids. Huh. I swore I saw those two kids. Around there. <laughs> we see things. I wish Marv would get back. He's probably hiding from Bonnix, too. Success. Oh, hi, kids. 
I managed to sneak into the studio without Mr. Bonnick's catching me. Why are you hiding? Oh, the boss has been after me all day to do a ghost story. I've been hiding from him till I can get it done. How much do you have done? <laughs> None of it. I've been too busy hiding. Oh, hide! Hide! Wait a minute. It's too late. You sure? Ask the expert. Uh -huh. Where have you been? I've been looking for you all day. Oh, gee, I uh, don't know, boss. Uh, maybe I was hiding. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Yeah, You've been wasting know. time talking to these two. Hi, Mr. Bonnix. Hi, how you doing? Don't, I thought I told you not to let me catch you playing in here again. We're sorry. Yeah, next time you won't catch us. What? Well, look, now where's that ghost story uh, you promised me? Oh, don't worry about that, boss. I've just been waiting around for something to scare me. <laughs> something to scare you? Oh, it's, it's, it's all right. I'm scared. It's okay. That's more like it. <laughs> uh, so far, all I have is this haunted house and a girl named Janet who is being haunted. By a real ghost? Apparently. But the real mystery is, why is she being haunted? And who will help her? We'd help her. I mean, if we could. Oh, sure. Well, I better get to work. Say, where's my eraser? Uh, you seen it anywhere, Skeets? Oh, Carrie? Oh, I better get another one. What with all the mistakes I usually make. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's turn on our magic belts and go help Janet. Wow. Wicked! I always wanted to meet a real ghost. And we can help Marvin with his comic book story at the same time. Yeah. Ready? Ready. Look out, ghosts! Here we come! <laughs> Hi. Oh, oh, my ghost! No, no, wait, we're not ghosts. We're just regular kids like you. I'm Skeets. Oh, I'm Janet. Where did you come from? I'm Carrie. Oh, and we're just your new friends, uh, uh, just from outside. Way, way out. But I'm, we'd really like to help you. Oh, you would? How? We're real good ghost hunters. <gasps> oh, the ghosts! Uh, oh. You don't really believe in ghosts, do you? Oh, but they're here. They're always here. Oh, oh dear, someone's coming. Let's hide. Right. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to, please. Janet! Poor thing, so jumpy. Cameron, thank goodness it's you. Oh. I heard uh, voices. Is something troubling you? Uh, no, no, it was um, just... Not the ghosts again. Yes, there were ghosts again. Oh, Cameron, I get so frightened. Oh, there, there, you poor dear. <laughs> now you know that you can always tell your old friend Cameron about anything that might be troubling you. No matter how frightening it may be. Oh, Cameron, thank you. You're the only real friend I have here at Sterling House. All I have are ghosts and that horrible aunt of uh, mine. Uh, uh, now you mustn't speak ill of your aunt. Why not? She looks ill. She looks sad because she knows you're unhappy living here. Why don't you leave? No! Well, that's what she wants, for some reason of her own. Well, I don't frighten that easily. Well, such a brave child. Well, remember your old friend Cameron warned you to leave <laughs> for your own safety. Who is that? Oh, that was the butler. He's my only friend. He's your best friend? She ought to make friends with the ghosts. Skeeter, be nice. If you two would just stay with me, I would be so grateful. This house is a little scary sometimes, but it's all mine. I inherited it from my late Uncle Sterling. That's his portrait. He was my only living relative. Well, except my Aunt Reba. But I don't think she's really my aunt. My uncle never mentioned her to me. But why stay if you're not happy? Oh, it really is a warm house. Uh, except... Except when the ghosts come out. And when does that happen? Um, that happens when the lights dim and the wind blows and there's thunder and, and lightning. You mean like now, don't you? Yes, the ghosts are coming! No, no, no! Wait, not that door, okay? And who are you? What are you doing here? These are my friends. This is Carrie, and, and I came to visit Janet, and we saw ghosts. 
ghosts. Ghosts? <laughs> oh, Janet, I told you to stop talking this nonsense. It's not nonsense. It's true. I saw them too, you Enough. know. Enough. Enough of this. Oh, I know what it is. You invent these ghosts of yours to avoid the responsibility of owning a home. <laughs> Admit it. Well, it is a bit overwhelming. Well, I have a suggestion to make. I will buy your house from you. Buy it? Yes. I'll have a deed prepared for you to sign at tea, and your good friend Cameron can witness it. Should you give her some time to think about it? Guests should mind their manners. Of course, I'll give you time to think about it, Janet, dear, and you'll sign at tea. Or else, do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Good. Now, why don't you take your little friend away? She can wash her hands for tea. But I don't like tea. Go! A little brat. Well? Well, I almost had them convinced, but the little brat had some other little brat with her. A uh, friend. The trouble with you is you don't like kids. Now look at me. I'm her friend. Because I tell you to be. You're supposed to gain her confidence and tell me what frightens her. Ghosts frighten her like they frighten everybody. <laughs> look, I've done my part to perfection. She trusts me utterly, like a little sawdust stuffed teddy bear. You're too smug. She's smart. We can't keep fooling her forever. She may stumble on the truth. What, that there's a fortune in silver hidden somewhere in this house? Ah, if we can't find it, how can she? Because she's good. She's good through and through. <laughs> Remember that secret riddle old man Sterling left? Aha! Uh -huh. After years of searching this immense house inch by inch, all we found is this. And it's addressed to her. Ugh. My wealth, dear niece, supports this house indeed to all, but your good use it is forbid. But from the grasping evil hands of greed, my wealth will surely stay forever hid. Oh, not a single silver coin, just this. Oh. Do you suppose we can't figure it out because we're the greedy ones? And what's wrong with greed? <laughs> when I was a child of five or so, a smart cat from birth, I figured it isn't just who you know, it's what you're worth. I'd sit with my father and read the news at a very early age. He'd laugh at the comics while I the financial page I told him Grab a little greed from your fellow men That's my little creed Squeeze a buck or ten Pinch a little penny Open up a bank Be one of the many who rank <laughs> When father died I was so bereft I mourned his cruel fate until I counted up what he'd left ha! in real estate. I sold the land with great success and never had a doubt. If money can't buy happiness, whoo, I'll do without. And so I grab a little green from my fellow man. Heart should bleed in my solid gold sedan. Scratch a little itch, stick it to the meat. Be so filthy rich that I read. Oh, oh, grab a little feed, feel a little fault. If fathers, fathers are in need, that's not our fault. Try a little blackmail, collect a hundred thou. Should you sneak a pack mail, then you must allow murder or mayhem. Foul means all foul. Trap or way laser. Fire, a prowler, persuasion, evasion, or slip them a bill. Grab a little bit for somebody else, please. So if he agreed to succeed, I'll prepare the deed for Janet to seed. Sign. And if Janet does not sign, we must dispose of her over tea. And sterling silver will be ours. <laughs> and no uh, one will be the wiser. <laughs> Except me. I wonder what happened to your friend. Psst. I have to tell
tell you something, you guys. What's up? It's about the tea. What about the tea? The tea oh. is served. Oh, Cameron, must I? I think you should, Janet. We mustn't upset your Aunt Reba. Well, I will if you say so. Ah, good. <laughs> I know I can trust you. I wouldn't be too sure. Everyone sit down for tea. Shall I uh, serve tea, madam? Wait. First, Janet, I want you to sign this deed and your good friend Cameron can sign as a witness. But I don't want to sign it. Aunt Reba, for whatever his reasons, Uncle Sterling left this house to me. Yeah. I just don't think he wants me to sell it. Well then, drink your tea. Drink! Ooh. Oh, dear. Do you suppose it really could be? Uncle Sterling! You, come with me. We can show them some ghosts of our own that'll settle this thing once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> for once, you get the last laugh. Well, at least I knew for once it wasn't a real ghost. Good going, Skeets. And there are no ghosts in this house. There are no ghosts? Hey, don't drink that stuff. I think it might be poison. I thought so. Good guess, Skeets. Your Aunt Reba and Cameron are trying to get you out of this house. But what for? For this. A piece of paper? It's a riddle. But I know lots of riddles. Not like this one. Your Uncle Sterling wrote this one just for you. Well? A fortune in silver hidden in this house. So that's what they want. Right. I'll bet they're going to try to scare you out of this house once and for all. But maybe we can beat them at their own game. How? What if they actually saw Sterling's ghost? They don't know Skeets is here. Gotcha. I'm going to go right now and get to work and get a costume, all right? Wasting any time. They sure aren't. Janet! Janet! Look here, he's a ghost! Oh! Janet! Leave this house! Leave this house now, or you'll never leave us. You'll become <laughs> one of us! Another ghost? Ghost! Ghost! Ah! 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 It worked! Good going, Skeets. Ooh. No, I'm Skeets. Then it was Skeets. Who are you? Uncle Sterling. Hello, Janet. A, a real ghost? Yes, but a nice one. Why are you back? For a while, it looked like Reba, who is not your aunt, and Cameron were going to make a ghost out of you. I came back to help, but your friends here were a big help in themselves. Now, Janet, you are free, free to guess the riddle and take my fortune. But well, what about you? Oh, don't worry about me. I will be lonely, but a ghost is always lonely. <laughs> hide all alone in walls and drains my friends only moan and clank their chains instead of walking all i do is coast i'm such a lonely ghost i don't like the night i'm always cold my friends are a sight and smell like mold I don't give parties, I'm an awful host. I'm such a lonely ghost. You mortals see right through me as I soar through a door or a shell. And folks here who once knew me say that I'm just the shadow of my former self. I've no use for dinner or anything sweet I'm just getting thinner and white as a sheet I'm just clear as jelly on a piece of toast 
I'm such a lonely ghost. I hate being eerie. I'd like to go play. But people are leery. They all run away. I'm just the spirit at a wiener roast. I'm such a lonely ghost. My nerves are all in tatters. It's no fun to be shunned and ignored. The only thing that matters is to make conversation with the Ouija board. I'm not really scary just incomplete so please don't be wary or make retreat I don't like haunting I'm a fraud at most that's why I'm such a lonely ghost being alive is what I'd like to boast but as things stand I'm a lonely ghost <laughs> Now, guess the riddle. Oh, well, my wealth supports this house. Now, that could mean upkeep, but it could also mean literally keeping it up. I wonder. I, I wonder. wonder. <laughs> hmm. <gasps> Look, it's shiny underneath. Here's the fortune in silver. It's hidden in the pillars. It was right under their noses all the time. No wonder they couldn't <laughs> see it. Hidden in plain sight. <laughs> yes, Janet, and now all of it is yours. You may leave this house forever. Oh, but I think I'd like to keep living here, Uncle Sterling. You mean you'd be willing to keep a ghost company? Oh, yes. I know all about ghosts now. <laughs> Thanks to Carrie and Skeets, I'll never be afraid again. Me too. And that's from one ghost to another. That's talking ghost to ghost. <laughs> Come on. I'm with you. We solve all the mysteries we're going to solve here. Bye-bye, you two. Oh, you're leaving? Thanks for everything. So long, Janet. Now, maybe I can get to work. Oh, Marvin. Have we got a story for you? Oh, I don't have time for any of that now. If I don't come with a comic book story right away, I'm in the soup. But this is your story. Guess why Janet's being haunted? Uh, uh well, I give up. To why? get to scare out of the house. And not by ghosts, but a, by a phony Aunt Reba and a shifty butler named Cameron. Who are disguising themselves as ghosts. So they can find a fortune in silver that was hidden by our Uncle Sterling. Well, say, that sounds like fun, but, um, where is Sterling's silver hidden, huh? Right in plain sight. Hey, where'd you come up with that? I don't know. I found it kicking around. Hmm. But you can use it. Hmm. But how can a fortune in silver support a house and be in plain sight at the same time? That's what you have to guess, Marvin. And in the end, the real ghost of Uncle Sterling comes to help. Well, a real ghost? Uh, wouldn't you two be afraid of a real ghost? Ah, we're ghost experts. We like him. What? Do you want to hear as uh, how I dress as a ghost and scare Aunt Reba? No, he doesn't. We have to explain a lot more than that. Uh, right, uh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we tell you now how you can hide something in plain sight? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, well, let's play a game. Right. First, we need something to hide. Of course. Like, say, this eraser. Say, that's my eraser. I recognize it. I wondered where it got to. All right, it was my turn, right? Okay, I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have to hide this in plain sight. Oh, okay. In today's adventure, Skeet starts out to rescue the famous Aladdin, but is captured. Carrie comes to the rescue. Hi, Marvin. <laughs> oh. Why oh, so jumpy? I was expecting Mr. Bonix. He's bringing me a lamp. A lamp? Looks like you've got enough light in the studio. No, oh, no, no, no. Not like this lamp. Uh, this is a very special lamp. In fact, it's a very old lamp. In fact, it's... Just like Aladdin's lamp. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Boss, you look so happy today. I am. Oh, 
I was. <laughs> Remember, boss, uh, they're your readers. I just thought I'd show them my Aladdin story. Uh, okay? Well, I don't have time to ride herd on you and this studio. Other things are just too important, like my lamp. <laughs> Gee, thanks, boss. Don't get fingerprints on it! I'm sorry. I... That's a very valuable antique. If anything happens to it, something very unpleasant will happen to you. Oh, get me. I get you, boss. Good. Now get to work. Yes, sir. I got a Latin story on my desk by this afternoon. Yes, sir. Get rid of these kids. So long, Mr. Bonnock. Thanks for letting us visit. Kids. <laughs> kids. Oh, come on, Al. Burrow's not so bad. Uh, he just tries to be. So what's with this Aladdin story? Well, Aladdin's magic lamp has fallen into the hands of evil Prince Fickle and I. Of course... Whoever controls the lamp also controls the genie in the lamp. Prince Fickle and I has chained Aladdin into the dungeon and taken away the palace. Gee, nothing could be worse for Aladdin, huh? Oh, uh, the prince is going to behead him at dawn. Well, that's worse, all right. <laughs> Things were pretty rough in ancient Baghdad, weren't they? Yes, and it'll be rough for me if I don't finish the sketch for Mr. Bonnix. So how does Aladdin escape the dungeon and get his lamp back? I don't know yet. He's in a tight spot. I thought borrowing Burl's priceless antique lamp might inspire me. You know, give me some ideas about the Arabian Nights. And all. Marvin, stop bedding fingerprints all over my lamps. Come on, Yes, sir. I'm giving you some brass polish. You can spruce it up a little. Oh, okay, boss. I'll bet I can free Aladdin in no time. This adventure looks a little too dangerous for the likes of you. Oh, yeah? Hey, what are you doing? Skeeter, you'll end up in chains yourself. Carrie, you don't think I can stay out of trouble for a minute, do you? Come back here! Skeeter, come back here! <laughs> oh, what does he use to struggle against these chains? Oh, Aladdin, you look as though you dwell in the land of a thousand fools. A prisoner in your own palace. Uh, the joke is on me. Oh, if I could just get my hands about my magic lamp. Oh, for the help of my genie. Oh, my prayers are answered. A genie! Aladdin, my name is Skeets. A genie named Skeets? Uh, I'm not a genie, but I have come to help you. I'm going to release you from these chains and, and get you out of this dungeon. Oh, a day of a thousand happy hours! But it only takes one guard to ruin a perfectly happy day. So, you would free Aladdin. I don't know how you've entered here, but once in, you'll stay in. Oh, wicked. Carrie was right. I can't stay out of trouble for one minute. Hold still, small sneak. Make friends with my dungeon chains. <laughs> Whoa, dungeon chains. Well, this is where I lose my male ego. Carrie, help! <laughs> oh, no. Skeets has been captured. What'll I do? I've got to get him, but I'm not going into that dungeon. Oh, great. Here's the palace drawing. I'll go there. Oh, maybe this lamp will come in handy. I'll pull the old switcheroo. Well, this game you taught me helps to pass the time, Skeets. Don't worry. Carrie will have us out of here before we can play another game. I guarantee it. Oh, that's her now. Oh, day of a thousand woes. It is Prince Fickle am I. Yuck. Ah, so this is the brave boy who would free you, Aladdin. <laughs> I came to see this radish-sized rascal for myself. Compared to you, he has the bravery of a thousand tigers. Wow, wicked, thanks. Just give me a sword and we'll watch your courage melt like the dew on the grass of Baghdad. Poetic, but impractical. It is forbidden to fight a prince. A self-appointed prince. I have this palace to prove it. Stolen from me. And I have also stolen your magic lamp so I can keep the palace and rule in your place. Fiend. Even a genie must obey me. He must, but he does not choose to. You have only enslaved him. As I have also enslaved your people. Fiend! Thank you. Ditto, Fiend! How quickly they learn. Aladdin's fool. Using his magic lamp to do silly things like give riches to the poor. <laughs> So much love for one person nauseates the stomach. The whole kingdom loves him. And what of evil? Yeah, 
You nauseate me. I came to give you good news and bad news. The bad news is that I'm beheading you both at dawn. What's the good news? So that you don't have to brood about it. I've decided to save you lots of worrying and behead you at dusk instead. Well, I have bad news for you. You'll never get away with it because right wins out in the end. Not as long as I have the magic lamp. <laughs> he has a point, you know. Well, you're right, young one. As long as Prince Fickle and I has ruling the land, he, he, my people will live in misery. And as long as he has the genie of, of the magic lamp at his command, he could rule the entire world. We must find a way to stop him. Yeah, but these chains have stopped us. <laughs> Where's Houdini when you need him? Houdini? Is he a genie? Where's Houdini with his bag of tricks to get us out of this Arabian fix? We're chained, contained in a prison cell, evermore to dwell. We're chained, contained, and I'm not really feeling very well. We're chained, contained. By an evil prince that we can't convince To undo we do And enjoy seeing other people wince We're chained, contained In a dungeon damp And he has my lamp We're lost, double cross And besides that, I think I have a cramp oh. <laughs> should be real easy. Uh-oh. Not so easy. A girl. A guard. A lamp. A sword. A spy. A Such a confusing palace, but she cannot get far. No intruder can elude the great rubber dove for long. <laughs> ah, there is a way I have not checked. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, a thousand pardons, my lady. I would never think of disturbing the chamber of the handmaidens. Rubber, you could lose your head for this. <laughs> Did you perhaps see a strange girl in strange clothing running through in a strange manner? Oh, lucky stars, which way did she go? A thousand thanks. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Now to get it down to the dungeon without getting caught. Ah, this way. Not the sign of the strange girl. She could not have come this way. Aha! A strange sound. It must be the strange girl. There is a strange girl on the loose in the palace. So? 
She was stealing a lamp. A lamp? The magic lamp? If it is lost, I am ruined. Look, master. Oh, a thousand sighs of relief. I am not ruined. The lamp is safe. What about the girl? Why should I fear a mere girl? What can she do? Nothing. As long as my lamp is safe, you can forget about her. I have something much more interesting to contemplate. Look. Ah, what a pretty sunset. How can you be so evil when there's such a pretty sunset like that? I hate pretty sunsets. I like dusk. And soon it will be dusk. Dusk is nice, too. And it will be the end of Aladdin and his young friend. <laughs> Dusk is not so nice. I think I'll go have dinner. Come back here! I want you to go down to the dungeon and bring them both back up to me. It's time for the beheading. Before dinner? Of course! <laughs> what treachery. <laughs> Another game? Oh, I don't think so. I haven't won one game yet. Oh, come on. I'm sure your luck will change. You see, it's changing already. What? One of the prince's handmaidens? But how could this be? They are as treacherous as they are beautiful. Give me a break. It's Carrie. Carrie? The friend I was telling you about. Oh, a thousand welcomes, fair Carrie. Likewise. I have your lamp. My magic lamp. But how could anyone elude the cunning of Prince Fickle and I? By eluding his god, rub -a -dub. Oh, It is a miracle. Not a thousand miracles. <laughs> Quick, Aladdin, rub the lamp so we can escape. Yeah, rub -a -dub the lamp. Nothing happened. You know, sometimes my dad can't start the car in the morning. Why don't you try it again, Aladdin? <laughs> it's a dud. Wait. From whence did you get this lamp? From off the prince's pillow. Oh, just as I feared. A thousand bad fates. That's more like it. Prince Fickle, am I, keeps the real magic lamp away from this lamp, so no one thinks to steal it. The real magic lamp he uses as a lamp. The cunning fiend. <laughs> We're in trouble. Aladdin! Skeets! Uh-oh. Here comes more trouble. Kevin, you gotta get out of here. If they find you, we're all sunk. But how? Okay. Turn on your magic belt and walk right through the comic book panel. Right. A magic belt? Oh, a thousand wonders. Good luck. Don't worry. I'll think of something. Prepare yourselves. Your doom is upon you. Once a lad out of the way. I need have no fears. Oh, sometimes I just hate being treacherous. <sighs> I'm always afraid of something. Oh well, treachery is its own reward. I can handle fear. Aladdin's here! Ow! No, 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 no! He's in my custody! Stop staring me like that! Put me down! And bring them hither. Come along, you two. Come along. Don't be sad. It's only your doom. It is a sad blue dusk and a blue doom. Blue doom. He left me standing. Silence! Let's get on with the beheading. How? How? What do you mean, how? This is my first beheading. Really? It's my first beheading, too. How about you? It's yours? <laughs> Skeet, you are a brave young fellow. For as long as I live, I shall never forget you. First, you must command them to kneel in the center of the palace floor. Would you mind kneeling, please? With a shirt on pillows. <laughs> you be more commanding than that. It always pays to be polite. Very well, just get on with it. Ready? Behead! Oh, one of your faithful handmaidens, Prince. She helped me search for the strange girl. Oh, 
How nice. And what do you wish from me? To entertain you, my prince. <laughs> but I'm already being entertained with a beheading. Yes, my prince. But I've prepared a special pre-beheading entertainment for you. It is a custom of the palace. Are you sure this is a custom at the palace? Most assuredly. Sometimes we have entertainment without any beheadings at all. <laughs> what do you say, Rubba Dubba? Oh, let her entertain, my prince. A beheading is over far too quickly. Very well. Uh, what will you do? The song of the lamp. Oh, that sounds nice. I dance with the lamp, too. What lamp? This lamp, to begin with. As you wish. There's no harm in having you dance with this lamp. I'm sure. Salt in bottle lamp fashioned out of gold. The bowl was covered with letters very old. He went to polish it, rubbing as he would. When the smoke had cleared, there a genie stood. I am the genie of the lamp. Ever your servant, ever your champ. I'll do your bidding, but be sure what you are bidding is pure. The sultan used the lamp for his treachery. The genie had to do what he would decree and when his will was done all his foes were dead the genie reappeared this is what he said i am the genie so beware now you are free of every care i did your bidding as i swore but there is something in store There visiting brought his lamp along And he decided to right the Sultan's wrong The prince exchanged his lamp for the Sultan's own And soon the genie was aiding him alone Thus did the genie help the prince Bring down the Sultan and ever since He'll do your bidding Just be sure what you are bidding is a thousand standing ovations on your beautiful song. Thank you, my prince. Of course, you know it is forbidden to touch that lamp you hold. But why, my prince? Because. Because, <laughs> because all believe it to be Aladdin's lamp. <laughs> you mean the famous magic lamp of Aladdin? But I'm too clever to simply let it lie in view, ready to be plucked by any passerby like fruit off a tree. Oh, how poetic. And clever. I've already switched the real lamp for the one on the pillow. You what? Now yeah, rub the lamp! Mama, grab my lamp this instant. Where's the genie? The red one. Oh, this one's a dud, too. Not at all, brave ones. I, Rubber Dove, am the genie of the lamp. My genie? But I didn't recognize you. I am also a master of disguises. What wilt thou have me do to this treacherous one? Change him to a toad? Fling him to the moon? Mercy! Just hand me your sword, genie. <laughs> Prince Fickle am I? You shall now fight me honorably, without any magic on your side or mine. There must no shackles to bind my arms. Draw your sword! I don't like the odds. Ah, oh, this is ridiculous. Prince Fickle and I leave my palace forever. It's a deal. <laughs> Excellent, O oh master of the lamb. What is your command now? 
Restore me to my previous state of dress, as befits a prince. Your fortunes have been restored. And now I can continue giving them away to the unfortunate. Half my kingdom shall be yours. And when you are of age, you shall become my princess. Now I know it's time to get out of here. I really appreciate the offer, but we have to get back to our own kingdom now. Then farewell. And may you always use your magic wisely. That was a great adventure. And a close call. I don't want you running off into a comic book panel like that again. How would I explain it to Marv? And people might find out about our magic belts, too. How are you going to explain this to Marv? Oh, my goodness, you're right. Huh? Hmm? Oh, here's the lamp, Marvin. Hey, thanks. You know, I never realized before how old-looking this thing is. Really? It looks like it always did to me. Hmm. In fact, that is Aladdin's lamp. What an imagination. These kids believe everything I draw. Gary, Marv, that's the real lamp. Skeeter, what are you talking about? Look, you switched it for the phony one on the pillow. If Mr. Phonics ever finds out that we lost his lamp in a comic book, we're going to be in trouble. Oh, don't worry. He'd, He'd never, never believe, believe us. us. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. If you want. Okay. Say, what are you two scheming about? Oh, huh? we're going to go now, Marvin. Yeah, Come right. on. Bye now. So long. In today's episode, Carrie and Skeets unravel a baffling mystery in the British Museum. Our story opens as Marv tries drawing the scene of the crime, but can't please his boss, Burl Bonnix. No, 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 Marv, this is a mystery. I want that real feeling of ancient Egypt in that museum. Well, it's really hard to visualize the look, Mr. Bonnix. Uh, maybe if you could just show me for a yeah, minute. Don't be ridiculous. Besides, it's time for lunch. Oh, wait, boss, it would really help. Wait, wait, just do this. Uh, da da da, 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 da. Marv, you haven't got it right at all. No? See, the feet have to be parallel and... Uh, Nobody around? Uh, no, 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 you see. And then you, you kind of undulate. Oh, that's perfect, boss. Just hold that. Let me just do a rough sketch. That's great. Yes, keep going. Perfect. Hold this. Great. That was almost got it. Just a second. Did you want disco dancing? Those kids again. Good afternoon, Mr. Bonnix. Hi, Skeets. Hi, Carrie. I want you to know that I was helping Marv out on his latest assignment. We were doing very important work. Yes. Sure. Yeah, Marv is drawing a mystery story that takes place in the Egyptian knickknack room of the British Museum. Oh? What's the mystery? Ah, the theft of a priceless artifact. What gets stolen? Uh, Cleopatra's paperweight. <laughs> a priceless artifact? Well, of course, the real mystery is how it gets stolen. And how does it get stolen? Um, uh, I don't know. Of course you don't know. You spent company time talking to them instead of getting down to work, as I do. Are you going to work now? Of course not. I'm the boss. I'm going to lunch. <laughs> well, who solves the case in your mystery? Mm, a famous detective named Sherwood Ferret. I'll bet you I could solve this case in a minute. There it goes again. Well, it wouldn't be easy. A thief could be anybody in the museum. And a constable shows up as soon as the alarm goes off, but there's nobody in the room. Wow, I can almost hear it. You are hearing it. The no, the lunch bell. This is my only chance to get something to eat. I'm going over to the studio cafeteria for a grilled cheese. Hey, that sounds great. Let's go get a grilled cheese with Mark. Hey, help me think. Wait. Now's our chance to step into the story and see what happens. I want to get a grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, later. Turn on your belt. OK. We'll help Marv. Here it is, the British Museum. Yeah. And here's the pedestal where the paperweight ought to be. There's the alarm. And here's our two thieves caught red-handed. Us? But we're not the thieves. We're going to catch the real thief. Oh, do tell. And how did you know it was missing? Let's just stole it then. This gets worse and worse. I wish I'd gone for a grilled cheese. If you ask me, you two are the culprits. Well, who's asking? Hey, 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 what's that then? Insolent little rascal, aren't you? Clearly the criminal type. You're both under arrest. I better cuff you. You might be violent, yeah. <laughs> Give me a hand. Go on. Right, let's go. We'll be just in time for tea down at the station. Wait, we can't leave. 
And why not, may I ask? He'll be here any minute. Who will? Sherwood Ferret. Chief Inspector Detective Sherwood Ferret. You know him, I suppose? No, him. Everyone down at the force knows him. But everyone knows he's on the track of a notorious criminal. He doesn't have time for the likes of you. Let's go. You're the only suspicious suspects in the vicinity. What Come about on. that hand? That looks pretty suspicious. Stay here. You, you're under arrest. Oh, now you've ruined everything. You mean I've ruined your dastardly crime? Oh, I mean you've ruined the wet footprints I was examining. Now I shan't be able to tell who's been here. You're examining footprints? Constable, don't you know who I am? Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> it's Detective Inspector Sherwood Ferris. Oh, see? Bright lad, bright lass. <laughs> what are you doing in cup? He thinks we stole Cleopatra's paperweights. Yeah. What a nonsense. Bobby, release him. But, sir, sir, they're my prime suspects. Hmm. What's your name, Bobby? Yes, sir. What? I said, what's your name, Bobby? Yes, sir, it is. That's my name. My name is Bobby, sir. Oh, well, still, off with the cuffs at once. Thanks. Thanks. Mm. Uh, they can't be guilty. Oh. Why can't they be guilty, sir? Elementary, my dear Bobby, or a uh, uh, constable. They could never leave the museum in plain sight with it, and they cannot be hidden in those clothes. Therefore, for the moment at least, uh, you cannot arrest them. All right! <laughs> I've decided to enter this case because I'm sure it will help me apprehend a notorious criminal operating this district. Now, Constable, uh, it's you must know of whom I speak. Of course, this sir. being your district, That's huh? right, sir. That's right. You're talking about Lightning Lindsay, sir. Exactly. Good fellow, good fellow. We'd like to watch you solve the case, sir. Do tell. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, you could be useful. Who's Lightning Lindsay? Oh, the slickest thief of my career. He has no fears, no scruples, and no tact. He's called Lightning because he always strikes twice in the same place. Mm. A shop was robbed not far from here just a moment ago. And then I heard this alarm. And you knew it must have been Lightning Lindsay again. Precisely. <laughs> I've been on his trail for weeks. It shall end here. Oh, I don't know, sir. He's a tricky one. <laughs> well, why do you assume it's a man? It could be a woman. You're a genius, you are, sir. <laughs> well, in any case, this is the opportunity to ferret out Lightning Lindsay. The thrill of the chase is on. A body up the chimney, handprints on the door, a set of teeth hidden beneath a crack in the basement floor, a kerchief with initials, Footsteps in the dark, an eyeglass frame, the made-up name of the man with the green birthmark. It's the thrill of the chase, the thrill of the pace. When you look for a clue, any old clue that shows that you are winning the race is truly sublime. You're in your prime when you crack the perfect crime in two. That wine stain on the curtains. It could be blood, you know. That familiar hand in the baby grand, it belongs to dear Aunt Flo. The man who laughed her too loudly, the lady with the cane. It holds a knife to end the life of whomever there becomes pain. It's the... Thrill the run. And terribly fun. When you find until you've got the guilty one. It's elementary. To send the gentry to the penitentiary to run. It's the thrill of the hunt. Your chances are blunt. When you find what you saw. Draw the spot. To tie the knot. It's really a stunt to cherish a glow. I feel the glow when the guilty so-and-so is caught. And now to work, constable. Who was the first person in here after the alarm sounded? I was, sir. I saw the paperweight was gone and just stepped out to look about when I caught these two kids. Hmm. Did you see anyone leaving this room, shall we say, in a hurry? Not a soul. Then I submit the thief is still in this museum. 
Observe, a uh, one way in and one way out. Now, whoever our thief is, he or she must pass by us to escape the museum with Cleopatra's paperweight. Shh, listen. Footsteps. A fairly tall, grown man with better than average looks, I should say. How do you know that? Well, the sound of a firm stride, of course. <laughs> Everyone back. Let us observe our first suspect. Hmm? A word with you, sir. Caught. You're under arrest for the theft of Cleopatra's paperweight. You're joking. <laughs> Now, the police rarely choke, my friend. <laughs> I'm afraid you are under suspicion. What's suspicious about me? You were leaving the museum in sunglasses. That must mean you don't want to be recognized. You must be Detective Inspector Sherwood Ferret. Only he could deduce such a fact. I don't want to be recognized. Flattery <laughs> will get you nowhere. You're under arrest. Uh, wait. Who are you? I'm an actor. I've just done my first movie and I'm practicing going about incognito. Huh. Actors like being recognized before anyone has heard of them. Uh, what's your name? Goldstar Shoya. Never heard of you. See how well the sunglasses work? <laughs> Why don't you want to be recognized? The movie is... Awful. <laughs> well, that may be, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to uh, open your valise. No. No, anything but that. No. Open. No. What do you call this? Some sort of horrible joke. <laughs> I agree, it isn't very attractive, uh, but it is the image of the missing artifact. Look, it's Cleopatra's paperweight. Oh, Jiminy Ferret, you've done it. Yes, so it would seem. The case is solved. And you're under arrest. No, no, but, but, but I'm innocent. No, you must believe me, no. I'm innocent. I'm innocent of, of everything. You must believe me, I'm innocent of everything. Except a, a little overacting. Oh, dash it all, dash it all. I should have noticed this right away. What's that then? Oh, oh it's it... just, a, uh, just a newspaper clipping. No, no, no. It's an advertisement for a motion picture called The Giant Lizard That Ate Liverpool. Now, there's no reason to carry this with you unless this is the very movie which you made. You're absolutely right. Well, I understand your feelings completely. This movie does look awful. Constable, remove these cuffs. Then I'm free to go. No, 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 no. I'm afraid I must keep you here until I ferret out the real criminal in this museum. Well, and when will that be? Imminently. Listen. More footsteps. Obviously an old woman. How do you know that? They sound just like the other footsteps. No, no, no. Completely different. This is a quiet, unsure stride. I see she's also carrying a large handbag. Now, everyone move out of sight, please. Hmm? Good afternoon. Oh, forgive me for startling you. Ah! Oh, when I shock easily, I do. Oh. Well, uh, don't be nervous. I'm Detective Inspector Sherwood Ferret, at your service. Hmm. And what's your name? Well, uh, I'm Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Chadwick. Uh, May I have your autograph, Mr. Ferret? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, do you have a, uh, an autograph book and a pen? Oh, sure. Right here in my bag. Oh, no, it's not in my bag. I never carry my autograph book to the museum because the only people you meet here that are famous are dead. <laughs> Perhaps you'd autograph me case. <laughs> Perhaps you don't want to open your handbag in my presence. Well, then why not? Because Cleopatra's paperweight has just been stolen. Ooh, 
Are you all right? I told you, I cannot stand sudden shocks. Now, what has a theft got to do with the likes of me? Well, you are clutching your handbag in such a manner as you suggest it contains an object of precisely the same weight as the missing artifact. Now, I must ask you to open your handbag. I suppose I'm caught. <laughs> uh, what do you say to this? Look, oh, another paperweight. Hmm. How did this get into your handbag? I, I, I bought it. Oh, oh, that's a lot. You're under arrest. You're probably even lightning, Lizzie. Lindsay, that is, my friend. Yeah, Ferret, you were right. Yes, sir. You are a woman. Admit it. I admit it. I am a woman. <laughs> then off we go to prison. Come on. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Really? Constable Bobby, what, what atrocious manners you have. Oh, yes, sir. Well, she, she is reviving. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Chadwick, where did you buy this? Oh. I, uh, I bought it at the uh, museum souvenir shop. I, I swear it. Uh, well, I believe you. Oh, you do? Oh, you do, Ducky. Well, <laughs> perhaps I remind you of your own mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's because the museum press tag is still on it. Ah, oh, well, then am I free to go? I'm afraid not. You could be Lightning Lindsay. Lightning Lindsay? A nice old lady like me. In crime, <laughs> looks are deceiving. <laughs> Give me me paperweights, flat foot, it cost me two quid. Ah, tell me, was anyone with you in gallery C? What kind of a lady do you think I am? Don't despair, suspects turn up everywhere. By all my rules of detecting, this should have been an open and shut case. Oh, yes. An open and shut case, of course. Now, Lindsay might try hiding right under our noses until every suspect was rounded up and taken away. And what better place to hide than inside... Yes. Caught and ruined. All right, whichever of you thieves is Lindsay, take this and go. Wait, wait. You're supposed to be lightning, Lindsay. I? Well, I'm Ivan Rivers. I'm the special curator of the Egyptian knick-knack gallery. Oh, I say, you're sure with Ferret. Uh, indeed. And what are you doing uh, hiding in the mummy case? Oh, hiding dear. from the thief, of course. Dear, dear, dear. And I suppose that's another phony copy of Cleopatra's paperweight. No, this is Cleopatra's paperweight. Cleopatra's paperweight? Well, wait a moment, wait a moment. You mean to say there's been no robbery? Oh, yes, there has. But the thief stole the copy of the paperweight that we always have on display. This is far too valuable to be left lying about. As soon as I heard the alarm, I hid myself in this case with the real weight. Good show. You're the first person to foil the plans of Lightning Lindsay. Now, there's nothing he can possibly do now. Oh, my gosh. Where are you, Inspector? 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 I say, brilliant deduction, Ferret. <laughs> but there's nothing further I can do here. Allow me to leave and attend to my duty. Now, wait. You must remain with everyone else. Perhaps the curator of the Egyptian knick-knack room might also want to steal Cleopatra's paperweight. You're under arrest. <laughs> Easy, Bobby, Bobby. He is merely under suspicion, as is everyone. Nobody leave this room. I've gotten in the habit, no matter who denies, that everyone is guilty unless proven 
and otherwise These people look suspicious, they may be telling lies So everyone is guilty unless proven otherwise What me steal, me tell lies The only thing I'd kill for is to dramatize In a spot I can improvise But in this lot it wouldn't be too wise Detective is terribly cheeky He thinks I am telling some lies If I had a mind to be sneaky I should have put on a disguise He'd better stop looking suspicious I'd give him a vicious surprise If I had a mind to be vicious I'd chop the whole lot down to size How could he imagine That I would compromise My job at the museum By telling any lies How could he suspect me how could he surmise, although it might be tempting to pilfer such a prize? Yeah, How could he imagine that I would compromise? My only thing I do was by telling any lies. lies. How could he suspect me? I can improvise. What do you think he thinks? I should have put it on his eyes. Inspector! I oh, don't think we have any alternative at all but to take everybody in. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. For once, I am beaten. Mr. Ferret, what does a detective do when he runs out of a logical next move? Well, he, uh, he plays a, a hunch, of course. But uh, I don't have any more hunches. Well, I have a hunch. Well, just what is your hunch? Bobby, remove your hat. Look, it's the real paperweight. I'd know it anywhere. Ooh. Inspector, your case is solved. <laughs> That's lightning, Lindsay. <laughs> good work, young man, good work. Yes, I knew he had just robbed a costume shop, but nobody knew what costume was missing. Ah, uh, dash it all. Oh, I owe you both an enormous debt of gratitude. Oh, don't mention it. Mr. Rivers, you now have the one true Cleopatra's paperweight. And now, Lindsay, <laughs> it's off to jail we go. <laughs> and off we go to Bonnick's Comics. The way to mark is about this. He'll flip. Hide your belts. Oh, I'm just too nervous to eat lunch right now. Where am I going to possibly hide Cleopatra's paperweight? I know. How about inside a grilled cheese sandwich? Way too obvious. Why don't you ask us? Okay, okay. So where would you hide it? Tell you what. I'll tell you for a grilled cheese sandwich. Not bribery. Why not a one-on-one -on -one all day? No, that's okay, Carrie. A uh, good story tip is worth a grilled cheese. Okay, skis, spill it. In the constable's hat. He's really the thief. Say, that's a great idea. Here's your sandwich. Thank you. Hey, I helped solve this case too, you know. Right, all right. Don't get hostile. Since when did you start liking grilled cheese? Ever since you became a big cheese detective. <laughs> All right, Mark. Come on. I'm going to tell him more of the clues. Come no, on. I will. Well, okay, well, hold on. You both can. You both can. Come on. Come on around here. Come on around here. Come on around here. Yeah, come on around here. You both can. You both can. Just one thing. Don't get crumbs on my drawing board. Okay. Yeah, so anyway. Sandwich on the Well, I'm sorry. Do you want to hear this around? All right, it's inside the hat. Where the kids ready to say, let's go. Where the kids in the studio flying somewhere else in magic belts. The comic book kids, where the kids go in danger's door to a world never seen before. We're the first to dare a special pair. The comic book kids were Skeets and Carrie cooking up a trip. It's a journey through a comic strip. Heroes to meet, villains to defeat. Wonders start in a storyboard. With the kids ready to go with you. With a song and a trick or two. With the ones you know to up and go. Every new adventure is a magic show. It's true. Yes. The comic book kids! Really, wasn't that terrific? But hold on, we're not done yet. There are many more super adventures like the one you've just seen that will be available from Century Video soon. 
watch for them 